the ambassador and head of the Palestinian mission to the UK is Dr. Hunzum Zomlot. Uh, and doctor, thank you so much for being here on the programme. Your snapshot reaction to what you've heard coming from The Hague. Well, this is a very significant day, not only for the Palestinian people, not only for South Africa, but for humanity. We all agreed some 75 years ago, the never again, we all agreed that we will establish rules, systems, laws to prevent the horrors we inflicted upon each other during the First and the Second World War. Now, today was a big challenge for the international judicial system, and the court has come up with a very clear verdict. First, they have accepted South Africa's case that the, uh, Israel is committing genocide. They describe it as plausible, well, and well, therefore... They, they've accepted that yes, they will they look have, at it. They, yes, there is a difference. Yes, but 75 years of the same, Matthew of ethnic cleansing. Two-thirds of my people were ethnically cleansed 75 years ago. Two-thirds of the nation, including my parents. All the history of illegalities and war crimes and crimes against humanity. And finally, finally, Israel is on trial for genocide. And it's now going to have to face the wrath of international legality. The second part, which is not less important... Well, well I'll come to that second part in a moment, but uh, this is an interim ruling. We'll get the full ruling at some stage in the future. What we know today, though, is that uh, there was no call for an end to the military operation itself or a ceasefire. Are you, are you disappointed about that? Because there was talk at the start of this that perhaps that's what the call would come from the court uh, and that's what the hope was. I was hoping for much more clarity on that. However, I think the, the court was clear issuing a ruling for all states, including Israel, to uh, uh, abide by the following things. That Israel has to stop immediately killing Palestinians. It's as simple as that. That it has to allow for humanitarian aid to, to enter un, uh, unhindered. That it must not temper with any evidence. You see why it's on trial. Uh, uh, that it has to report back in one month. And this puts a serious pressure, not only on Israel as the, as the state committing the genocide, but on third parties worldwide. Because now we will be watching and following and working with any third party that is complicit in the genocide, including the U.S. and the U.K. Well, and lo it's, looking it's at, worth it, just looking, looking the, at the, issues the genocide of arms, still has looking at issues of, of arms, arms exports, looking at issues of material support for the genocide, the provisional measures the court provided is clear. They didn't say ceasefire, but it means immediate, comprehensive and permanent ceasefire. That's what it means. Well, it certainly means a change to quite a lot of the, diff the ways that uh, Israel has been carrying out the last few months. I in terms of what Israel has said, they have always insisted that this was about self-defence after those attacks on October the 7th from Hamas. You, you accept, I, I assume, Israel's right to self-defence? No, I don't. Uh, this, you don't? No, I don't. This concept does not apply on an occupier. This concept does not apply on a coloniser. This concept does not apply on a besieger. This concept certainly does not apply on a state that has just been accused of genocide and now on trial. But, but, this but in concept, terms of no, what happened on no, October the 7th, those atrocities there, the 1,200 people that were killed by Hamas, you're saying, in terms of Israel, don't have a right to defend itself after an event like that. that. That is really what you're saying? Israel has the right to defend itself only when it has quitted its occupation, its illegal presence. It's the people who are under occupation that have the right to defend themselves, have the right to resist as per international law. This whole concept has been so twisted and has led us to the genocide we are discussing. Now, Israel was given carte blanche under the pretext of self-defense. Governments like yours, Matthew, have given them a green light to commit the genocide under the pretext, the guise of self-defense. Well, that's not what, what the, Israel, the green light what is. Israel, what Israel, the UK what, government, the US government have effectively said they recognize Israel's right to self-defense. Now, the discussion has been how they have executed this war, and that is why we've got the, to The Hague today. Let me ask you a, no, a separate Matthew, Matthew, question. Matthew, I, just, I know you want to take me back to that I, one. I want but let me, I want let me, because it's well, important. It's a foundational one, Matthew. It has, it, it's the thing that led us to the, the calamity we are in, the genocide we are in, the carnage we are in. Do we have the right to defend ourselves? We are under occupation, under colonization, under, under apartheid. We live a, a system of racial domination and segregation, and Gaza has been under siege for 17 years. Do we have the right to defend ourselves? 
Answer me, please, Murphy. I'm not answering do we, your questions. Do, do you're you're here to right answer, answer mine. Let me ask you the question I was going to ask you, which was, uh, in terms of what has to happen now, if Israel does not comply with any of these instructions, what do you, should, what do you think should happen? We have the right to defend ourselves. You, know, you see why? I, I reverted to that very foundational conversation. Uh, it is now the responsibility of the international order, which, if it does not really... Uh, perform in a way in accordance with its own mandate will be the beginning of its own end because this is not a moment for Palestine or South Africa. This is a moment for the world. Everybody's watching. The people in the south, that's why they're living in South Africa. The people in the east, millions are following. This is a moment when everybody wants to see rules being applied on everyone equally. This is a moment when we want to see the never again applied on all of us, not just a group of us, not just a club of us, as, as has been the case. The selectivity of the West has hit everybody in the, in the, in the face. But you're the being double, selective as the, well. You're the double, saying the that double, the double Israel standard. doesn't have a, a the, right the double, to the double, As an occupier, as an oppressor, as a state that sponsors colonization, that steals land, demolishes houses for 75 years, it is our right to resist and defend ourselves. They are engaged in a constant 75-year-old system of oppression, repression, of a people that are in quest for liberation, for freedom, for justice, for a, a home they can call their own state. I mean, all these terms, Israel is defending its occupation, Matthew. Let us clarify this and set it very clear. Israel is waging a war to defend its occupation, its expansion, its illegal colonies. That's what Israel is doing. What we are doing is trying to say enough is enough. This is a time that you leave our territory, that we establish our state of own, and you respect international resolutions. So don't throw it on us and on the victims. The, the politics of blaming the victims has lasted for a long time, 75 years. And today the judges have, have clearly said who is the aggressor and who is the victim here.